Hello, Carol. Welcome in. Now, last week we had uh, author Eleanor Catton on to talk about her book, The Luminaries, and this week you've had time to read it. Mm. I have. Extraordinary. What an amazing young woman Eleanor Catton is. I mean, she's 27 or 28. Mm. And of course, as you will have explained last week when you're talking to her, this book has been long listed for the Booker, the Man Booker Prize, mm. which is an extraordinary achievement. Mm. And it's 800 pages. It's yes. a very big read. <laughs> um, I have to confess that the first, I would think, 200, slightly more than 200 pages, I had to keep looking back mm -hmm. at the cast list at the front. It begins with um, a meeting, a sort of slightly clandestine meeting mm. of 12 men in Hokitika. This is during the gold rush in 1866. And I must say that the, the town of Hokitika and all aspects of the gold rush and actually panning for gold and so mm. on comes to life mm. vividly. Not particularly through any descriptions, but just because she creates the people, she creates the place, mm. and that whole town comes to life mm. in your mind. It's crazy, wonderful. Crazy, wonderful ramshackle town, but, but yeah. big enough to have an opera house back yes. then. And Amazing. Staggering. Yes. Yes. Um, mm. But the first 200 pages, as I was saying, I had to keep looking mm. back at the cast list, and I'm very grateful that she listed the names of who the 12 men were, mm. and of course, Walter Moody, when he arrived unexpectedly into this room, and having just arrived in Hokitika, is uh, is a thirteenth man, um, and then the, the, all the other cast members um, are, are there, mm. and I had to look, keep looking back. But what happened was, like I would find myself thinking, now Balfour, which one's he? Is he <laughs> the whoremonger or the shipping agent or the? <laughs> it's but funny. after I mean, oh, three, four hundred pages, you're so drawn in and so caught up in the story that you knew who mm. each of these men were. Right. And I'm, I'm quite sure that if you analysed it, they are various personality types as well, because she has a, an astrological sort of overlay over this. So mm. at the beginning of every chapter, the, the astrology, and this we're talking about serious, serious astrology, yes, right. and I don't really understand a lot of the astrology, mm. but I mean, I'd like to reassure readers, you can read it for the story mm. without needing to understand the astrology. I think yeah. if you do understand that, understand the mathematics behind a lot of, of this really clever stuff, mm. um, you would actually get even more from the book. There's a whole other layer there. Mm. But it's a fascinating story of um, a missing person, a possible murder, um, fraud, all sorts of intrigues going on between the various people in this in this town during the gold mine. And is the whole time. thing set in New Zealand in, the whole in thing Victorian is, times? The whole that makes thing. it even more remarkable yeah, that it's yeah. been so successful already yeah. um, because normally things set all in New Zealand, you know, don't have much appeal to but people they're in Britain. All, they're yes. very English. I mean a lot yeah. of these men have arrived um, and of course, there are two really important Chinese men in it as well. Mm -hmm. Who are, so it covers the whole the Chinese um, gold miners down on the South Island. Um, but the, a lot of them are Englishmen who've just arrived off the okay. ships to come. So it has that so sort of very um, relevant English sensibility to it. Absolutely, yes, yes mm. it's very relevant to, to English history. It's very um, brave of her to have a novel with twelve characters because that's a lot for the average reader to absorb. And there's isn't more it? than twelve. The mm. twelve, but those twelve are just the main thirteen. Ones. They're just well, they're just <laughs> the, the group of men who meet originally. There yes. are other in fact, more important mm. um, characters who are not part of that 12. I mean, one of the most lovely characters is the prostitute, and she's called a whore then yes. because that was the term they used. Yeah. And um, she is the most, Anna Weatherall, she is the just most fantastic character. Yeah. And all the men in the town are really fond of her. I mean, they use her, but mm. they have great affection for her. And she, yeah. and so do you as a reader. She is the most wonderful, rounded, you know, very lovable character. Yeah. Um, and I understand the book that has chapters that get shorter and shorter yes, towards yeah. the end, which and must be a bit of a relief in an 800-page <laughs> book. <I> well, <laughs> the clever thing is that at the top of every chapter, she tells you chapter 14 in which such and such happens. Mm. And what happens as the book progresses is finally towards the end, the description of what's going to happen in this chapter becomes longer than the chapter itself. Mm. So it, it goes from, you know, reduces down in terms of... Mm. Um, the length of the chapter, but increases in the, the height, the depth, the length of what you're being told is going to happen in that chapter. Yeah. It's, a, it's a brilliantly clever book. She is an extraordinary young woman. I, I got completely drawn in Great. to Hokitika in 1866. I Thank loved it. Thank you so much, Carol Buse. <laughs>